Today, millions of people all around the world carry around pocket-sized computers called smartphones. It's hard to imagine a world without smartphones. But while the first smartphone is widely considered to be the IBM Simon, the idea of a pocket computer was first conceptualized about a decade earlier, not in Silicon Valley, but in the United Kingdom. Sign was the first company in the world to release a pocket-sized handheld computer. While most technology companies at the time were caught up in the home computer wars, Sign was thinking a step further. Instead of having a computer in every home, why not have a computer with you always? Sign PDAs were truly ahead of their time. At its height, Sign was massively successful, having been a part of the FTSE 100, which is a stock index of the 100 most valuable companies on the London Stock Exchange. Despite all this success, they never managed to reach the notoriety or success of the Palm PDA or Apple Newton. So what happened to Cyan? Cyan is one of the most famous names that we have in the technology business. It's also that rarest of beasts, a British company that not only came up with a cracking invention, it also knew how to make money from it as well. Cyan was founded in 1980 by David Potter. For the first three years of its existence, Cyan was a publisher and developer of software for home computers. Cyan hit it big in 1982 when it released a flight simulator program, selling more than a million copies. The company became one of the leading software developers in Europe, with sales of 1.6 million pounds. Sales of the company's flight simulator program gave it the finances to begin the development of its own hardware products. The company began making products in 1984. In October 1984, it launched the world's first volume-produced handheld PDA, called the Cyan Organizer. It resembled a pocket calculator, and machine featured a simple database, calculator and clock applications. Although originally designed for the consumer market, the organizer found a strong market among corporate and commercial users. We both have a diary. But mine reminds me of appointments. We both have an address book. But mine will find who I want for me. We both have a calculator. But I also have a cross-reference filing system, eight alarm clocks, and a powerful computer to handle my business affairs. He has problems. I have a Cyan organizer. Cyan released the next generation of the organizer in 1986. The organizer 2 introduced many hardware improvements, like a better keyboard and display. This machine had far more application functionality. The machine was so sophisticated that the UK government purchased 3,000 of these devices for use in benefit calculations by the Employment Services Department. More than 500,000 Organizer 2s were made, and it was truly instrumental in popularizing the idea of handheld computers amongst professionals and business people. In the following year of 1987, Potter listed the company on the London Stock Exchange. In 1989, after conducting market research, Cyan saw an opportunity to create a line of computers that were a hybrid of a handheld computer and a home computer. The line of computers was called Mobile Computers, or MC for short, but the MC line failed to get any traction. Overall, it was well designed, it had an amazing screen and was genuinely lightweight, but users complained about how basic it was. Its word processor was inferior to Microsoft Word and it didn't launch with a readily available software development kit. But ultimately, the MC was unable to compete against the rise of IBM PC compatible computers and thus Cyan quickly ended its production of the line just two years after it was launched. Meanwhile, the company's handheld computer sales were being hammered by a wave of new competitors. As giant companies such as Sharp and Canon began to dominate the handheld computer market, industry observers were wondering how long Sign would be able to last in the increasingly competitive technology market. The company was struggling and by 1991 had slipped into losses. The Scion persuaders are out in force, hoping for a flying start for Series 3. 
there's no concealing the fact that cyan profits fell in 1990, and the share price, once up at 400 pence, is down at around 50 pence as Series 3 is launched. The answer to cyan's troubles was the cyan Series 3, one of the most innovative handheld consumer devices ever created. It set a new industry standard for all handheld devices. The Cyan Series 3 was a major leap forward from the Cyan organizer. It had a battery life of between 20 and 35 hours. It had a well-designed graphical interface and it featured 1 megabyte of storage. More importantly, the device offered fully functional software programs such as database, spreadsheets and word processing capabilities. The Series 3 became the first handheld device to offer similar capabilities to the personal computer and was massively successful. Despite all this success, Cyan failed to enter the US market. By 1994, the company's sales had topped £100 million, but almost all of it came in the European market, especially its core UK market. Despite holding what many considered to be superior technology, Cyan lacked the marketing muscle to compete in the United States, particularly against the growing number of PDAs and their handwriting recognition technology. Yet in the United Kingdom at least, the Series 3 remained Cyan's true star. In the first half of the 1990s, it drove the company's sales to £124 million. Other versions of the Series 3 were released until its discontinuation in 1998. In 1997, Cyan would release the Series 5. There was no Series 4. The number was considered bad luck in some Asian countries. The Series 5 was a huge improvement from the Series 3. It featured a faster processor, a higher quality liquid crystal display, and updated software. Yet, the company was hampered by its limited production capacity and found itself unable to meet the demand for its product. Sign released the netbook in 1999 as a sub-notebook targeted at the mobile enterprise market. But the netbook failed to gain any traction and was discontinued shortly after its launch. The Sign Series 7 was based on the netbook and was released in 2000. In size, it was fairly original, larger than a handheld machine but smaller than a laptop computer. It was the first and last of the Sign Series to have a full-color electronic visual display and it had 16 megabytes of RAM. The Series 7, much like the netbook, failed to get any traction at the time. Better PDAs like the Palm had entered the market and were overshadowing Cyan handheld devices. But handheld organizers aren't as lucrative as they once were. So many people are making so many of them, they've become the big beans of the technology world. So Cyan is to stop making the organizers that made it famous Cyan had invested heavily in its operating system Epoch. It created a joint venture with Ericsson, Motorola and Nokia to make the operating system the industry standard for PDAs. The operating system was renamed Symbian OS and yes, it would go on to power Nokia phones amongst other devices. But unfortunately for Cyan, the heavy investment in Symbian sent its profits tumbling in the first half of 1999. David Porter would resign and hand over the company to a new chief executive in February 1999. Shares in Cyan peaked in March 2000, at the height of the technology boom. But the collapse of the technology sector, coupled with the fierce competition from US rival Palm and the release of the Windows CE, which was a PDA operating system that threatened Cyan's own operating system, led shares to fall about 95%. And in July 2001, it announced that it was stopping production of its flagship handheld computers. Science were a line of personal computing devices that were ultimately part of an evolution. Their standalone handholds were superseded by other better handholds, which eventually led to the smartphone era. Nevertheless, from a user experience standpoint, their philosophy was very modern, and this came through very clearly in their end product. For their time, they were revolutionary and contributed greatly to the groundbreaking concept of a pocket sized computer for everyday consumers. Sign ultimately, is a tale of how great products are not enough to build great long-lasting companies.